We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls, catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys. I am working on the cabinets right now for the barbecue, the fire top table, and I've got some huge granite slabs. I'm going to overhang the slabs a little further than a normal bar. Typically they're 12, maybe 14 inches, and I want to go closer to 18. I want to be able to sit up to the bar and not have my feet kicking the cabinets. But it's too far for the granite, even with a really thick granite I've got. I'm going to go ahead and put a steel subframe in it. Since there isn't a lot of room, I've got to use it with small bar, but I'm going to go really heavy gauge. So this is a really thick uh, three-quarter inch square tube. I'm pre-drilling some holes, small holes on one side, large holes on the other. So this screw can go through, but when I tighten it down, the head will actually be inside the tube because I have a big hole in the top, small in the bottom. And then I can put three-quarter inch sheeting between the steel frame and another piece of three-quarter inch on top that I can screw all together. Then these will be hanging off the edge of the cabinets, and I'll put a whole steel frame around all the perimeter. There's some areas because of the span, I'll actually use two tubes together, and other places where it's one. But I don't like to see big angle brackets under the counter because you hit your legs on them. So I'm building a really heavy frame that doesn't need the angle brace. So. That's what I'm doing right now. You can kind of see it over here. Got a little portable welder out here. But this, for example, the corners where there's a lot of weight, you'll see I have these holes lined up. So I'll have two bars coming out like this. These going into the cabinet. They just need to hold it long enough for the granite slab. Once the granite slab's on here, you can't lift this side without picking up the entire slab. But I'm gonna go ahead and bolt them to the cabinets. Then this big long bar will go out on the front and that will make this big heavy support for the overhang. This area right here is the barbecue. I'm starting to build the boxes for the insects for the barbecue, the small stove top. And then this island over here, I've gotta build a really big frame because I've got an overhang it's coming way out here and it's going around all three sides so you can pull up to the bar all the way around and in the top you can kind of see I got my gas line coming through here for a big fire top table so when you're sitting here you'll be about this far back there'll be a big fire coming up across the whole table to stay warm so you can sit from both sides fire between you warmth here Got the overhead heat above us. We've got a fireplace over there. There'll be chairs wrapping around on this side and a big TV on the rock wall over there. So we got shade. The sun, predominant sun in the hottest part of summer comes from that direction. So that's why we oriented this cabana on this side to keep you out of the really hot sun. But what's nice is in the morning, the sun comes up on this side when you want the sun on you. If it gets over direct over top, you're still in the sun, but when it gets to that really hot late afternoon sun, half of the pool shades out, the other half stays in the sun all the time if you want to lay out. So we're getting closer. I just got the fire pits over there done as well. The blue pots on top of the waterfalls have fire on them. There'll be three fireplaces on the pots, one big fire pit behind that, fireplace here, fire top table. So I think we got enough fire to stay warm. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to use this in the middle of a blizzard snowstorm. So we'll heat this floor up with the radiant heat up to 99 degrees so it's warm on your feet. No snow. Snow can come down. We'll be warm on our feet. The pool hot, the hot tub hot. And heat in here so we can do barbecues, watch TV, totally conditioned space outdoors. And you may not have noticed, I've got actual heat and air conditioning out here. They're pointed to loop the air in a big circle. 
So this says semi-condition, just to take the extra edge off. So I can actually AC this outdoor area like a, a AC wall curtain, or I can heat it with the heated vents that run all the way down, add the radiant electric heat from above, but also the heat from the bottom. So heat, AC, year round, 24 seven, this pool hopefully will get used a lot. Otherwise, I spent a lot of time and effort. So I better really like my pool. So I'm pretty excited. Let's get back to work. there and the steel frames in is folded down now that I've got this bottom layer done which is all cut up for the steel frame the next layer will be a giant sheet that bridges across all of the steel three quarters of an inch thick and I'll glue joint everything I'll put wood glue on this layer so I have two layers of three quarter inch glued together screwed together and this just locks it all in and when that glue dries coming out here between the overlap here and the steel frame this is not going to flex at all if you can't get it to flex it's going to be such a minute amount but then we'll glue down one piece giant granite slab on top of that and if you bond them together really well they'll act as one giant unit so the idea of this was to not have those big angle brackets underneath here and i knew that we'd be climbing up on here all the time to clean the barbecue hood up here, it's all covered in plastic right now, but I wanted to know that if a 300 pounder got up here and jumped up and down and got on there, that we wouldn't flex this granite and cause a crack. So, so far, so good. We got to finish this one, build, build a metal frame for this one, double its layer. I'm going to double all the layers of all the cabinets, an inch and a half total thickness, and then we'll put the granite on. So, granite's coming tomorrow. I have a lot more to do. Back to work. Here, the middle is the cutout for our fire top table. You can still see the steel supports passing through. If you kind of look underneath, you'll see how that worked out. All the steel frames. So we don't have any granite breaking and no flexing. Granite likely wouldn't break, but I don't even want to see it flexing. So, got the Rest of the countertops ready to go, double layered, glued and screwed. Laser set. Grant should be here any minute. All right, it's grain time. Well, I didn't want to try and pack that 
up the spiral stairs. So let's crane it. All right, guys, we're getting a lot closer to finishing this house. There are some that have wondered if just the pool is all winter capable or what about the rest of outdoors? Like, do I lose my water? Do I lose my ice maker? Do I lose my refrigerator? The answer is no. And it was a little tricky on a couple of the items. I didn't find anything that really made sense to me as a guaranteed solution to keep faucets from freezing, an outdoor shower, which I want to use and still have temperature control on it. And also the refrigerators, that part was easy because I could find some that were good for freezing conditions and it would keep the drinks warm, still cold, but not enough that it would freeze. So there is outdoor appliances that work. But something like this, if you think about it, this fixture, if it's a regular faucet, there would be water. Usually the faucet comes up out of here and loops over and that up spigot would be full of water and it would freeze and break uh, or the valve would freeze and break so this is actually just a bathtub fixture where it goes in level and the valve is inside the wall now in this wall I actually made it two two by sixes thick and this line goes all the way back to the inside of the house so the valving for these fixtures are in a conditioned space, heated. And then that takes care of these from freezing and the fact that the water doesn't come up, it doesn't freeze here, it will always drain out of this from the on off inside a conditioned space. However, some would ask, well, doesn't your peat trap freeze? Because yes, it would. Under this cabinet would go ice cold. It's a super simple solution. I used my ice maker to help guarantee it. And I also used my hot loop pipe that runs hot water through the whole house on a continuous loop I showed in a past video. But if you look in here, I wanna show you the peat trap. Well, you can't see it. <laughs> and that's intentional. Right here is two doors. If I open up these doors, I have insulation wrapped all the way around the inside of this cabinet. And the drain and peat trap is behind that insulation and open all the way through into the room behind me so that that heated space is heating the actual peat trap that's outdoors. And then I took the hot water loop because I have instant hot water everywhere, that's already hot. The loop that loops through the whole house, I actually brought up, wrapped it around these lines, down around the peat trap and back out. So not only do I have a conditioned space that's heated and air conditioned because it's in the house and coming out here, but I ran a secondary backup to that by running the hot loop through it. So I have two heating systems heating that. So essentially all this is indoor. So I can run it all winter long, 10 below zero. I have hot and cold running water. So this is the shower to rinse off before you get in the pool and after you get out to rinse off. However, these lines 
This, is, this could be 10 below on this side of the wall and 10 below on that side of the wall. And so the risk would be that line or any regular valve out here would absolutely guaranteed freeze. I'd have to go down, have some place I could disconnect it, drain it every winter, but that would suck because the whole purpose of this pool is 365 days a year, 24 seven operation. So the way I made my shower do the same is you don't see an on off in here. It's actually three stories down planned in advance. There is a one inch large line so it can fill fast and drain fast. It comes all the way straight up from the basement, makes one giant smooth loop down into the shower head. So it comes up and down. And if I hit this, instead of manual valves that could go bad, I just have a timer. One minute, five minute, 10 minute. I can just touch a button at any point and down three stories down, there's two valves. One's normally open, one's normally closed. As soon as I hit that button, it's slowly turning two valves. One valve goes ahead and opens up the water that feeds to the top that is going through a mixing station so that this is already hot at the perfect shower temperature every time. You don't touch anything. But the other valve is actually closing off where this will eventually drain. For example, right now it's operating, one valve's open, flowing through a predetermined temperature, flowing up three stories in the house from the very basement. Coming over the top, when the shower's done, the timer goes off on the electronic control, no outside valves, and simply one valve that's currently letting this water go will close. Simultaneously, another one opens that is the direct connect of this water feed and opens it straight down into the drain. So this, as soon as this turns off, you can see the steam coming off it right now. This water is draining right there to the floor. As soon as this turns off, instantly, this entire water line empties 100%. The little loop at the top, half of it drains out the shower head the other half all the way to the basement. So 100% of our pool, barbecue, faucets, fixtures, shower, and hot tub auto winterizes 24 seven. Any failure in the system, including what if the shower was running when the power went out and my generator didn't fire and my backup generator didn't fire and I really actually lost power, well the valves have internal capacitors that can hold power, and then if it senses that happens, they both revert, which will automatically turn off the shower and winterize it if I lost power somehow. So there's backups to if my generator system didn't work while the shower was in operation. I'm sure that makes sense, it's a lot of redundancy, but it's one of the funnest things. I love 50 layers deep, 50 layers wide. This was simple, it worked great. So excited, back to work.